Hey guys, it's Matt from Anti-Hedge, coming to bring you another educational video about cryptocurrencies. Before we get started, I just gotta say one thing. This is not financial advice and it shouldn't be misconstrued as such. We do not accept any liabilities for losses that you may incur during the process of your crypto journey. So with that in mind, you should actually be able to enjoy this video a lot because I'm gonna be talking about a very hot subject in the cryptocurrency space and that is Solana. So Solana. This coin right here, it's got a lot of hype and a lot of people are pegging it as the Ethereum killer. Now, that's pretty heavy duty because you're like, whoa, Ethereum, that's pretty big, it's doing everything. And now you have something kind of creeping up on it and saying like, hey, I'm the next big thing, right? So naturally there's always gonna be uh, communities that are like, okay, Solana can't do it. And then there's gonna be people who say they could do it. And today I'm just gonna go over some of the reasons basically like, why I think that Solana could do well. I'm not gonna say kill Ethereum or not because I'm a firm believer that all of this is for interoperability. And interoperability is more a matter of making everything connect to each other. Having basically a frictionless ecosystem where all these currencies could be basically transformed into each other. So I guess to start, I wanna go over basically the token itself. And what am I going to be going over? Well, this is the price. As you can see, it's been basically swinging, swinging for about a $30 margin up and down. So between 180 and 214. The market cap has grown a lot, especially over the last week. It's insane. Now we're in the top, we're rank six in the entire cryptocurrency market cap. That's insane. Insane because of how quickly it did it. So with a $55 billion market cap, and all this basically volume, it just goes to show how much people are actually using it. Now, one of the things I do gotta say is the circulating supply is higher than Ethereum's, about a little bit less than three times Ethereum's circulating supply, which means that in order for Solana to hit a higher price, you would need at least, you would need Ethereum's market cap and more to be able to drive it to that kind of price, which I wouldn't say is outrageous if they actually do succeed in siphoning off that market share from Ethereum, similar to what Cardano is doing. So it's very interesting to see that all these companies now are fighting for market share based off of what Ethereum's piece of the pie is. So it's almost like Ethereum has been granted this pie and everyone's trying to get their slice in it. So very interesting perspective. As you can see throughout the year, it's just gone parabolic. And I'm about to tell you a sad story. And you know what that sad story is? A year ago, I was looking at Solana when it was coming out uh, of its ICO. And I was seeing it at basically a dollar or even less than that. You know, like you catch something around there. Hold on, let me see the exact year to date. The lowest that you can see on the graph here is about a dollar fifty. I remember when it was coming out, it was right here, 77 cents in April. That was a year and change ago, 2020, April 12th, 2020. This is when this thing passed me by. Now, I remember reading about it thinking 50,000 transactions per second. That's insane. A blockchain that could actually do that would be astronomical. And in my head, I said, you know what? It's probably going to be a good investment, but guess what I didn't do? I did not buy. So that was an extremely painful moment for me as a trader when I saw it hit 180 recently. And I'm considering, okay, do I buy it now or have I missed those gains? Which is what a lot of people in my position are probably asking, right? And for me, it's just hard to look at that 70 cent to $189 and it's just like, whoa, do I jump into it the same way I would for Ethereum? Or do I accept that maybe the boat had passed me by? And now I'm gonna give you some of the reasons why I think that it's possible that it could keep going. So the first thing that I wanted to say, well, basically write the memorial on, uh, on, my, on my tombstone, 70, miss 70 cents Solana only to FOMO into it potentially later. But this is basically what I wanted to say that makes me think that Solana still might have some room to run. 
And that is beginning with the WEF, and that is the World Economic Forum. What is the e World Economic Forum? It's basically the guys that make most of the decisions for the world's economies. So everything that's currently happening now is because of these guys making global decisions for us. And that's usually done in Davos. And Davos is where they basically decide how they're going to shape the economy for us to live in, which is a very interesting thing. And what I wanted to get into was they released a 21-page report basically prepping governments for, um, for blockchains and cryptocurrencies and what the future could hold with them. And what I wanted to mention was, obviously, like, it talks about a lot of things. They mentioned that, like, Bitcoin's extremely secure and, like, all the different consensus mechanisms and how these things could affect the world, like, how they function. So that way a government official could read it and understand in a simple manner what's going on. And more or less what I wanted to get into was the list of currencies that they mentioned. And one of those was Algorand, Cardano, Celo, which I've never heard of, and I'll probably have to look into and maybe do my next video on, XRP, and then look right here, Solana. Sol Solana was mentioned, but Ethereum and Bitcoin weren't. And that's probably because those two have the main attractions or the main like uh, what everyone knows and what's interesting is that they mentioned Solana and they didn't mention it's 50,000 transactions per second uh, like speed which I found interesting so it made me think that it's possible that either they haven't reached it yet but it's possible through development or alternatively it wasn't something that was on their radar because they're still gaining more and more understanding about it and with crypto, there's a large, it's a large space. There's thousands of coins and there's more coming out every single day. It's hard to keep up with all of them. So I'm sure they're going through that process of doing this now because they're far behind in this ecosystem and how they're actually going to like start understanding it. So that was just one thing I wanted to mention in the WEF. You could, you, you'll be able to find it in the sources of this video. I also wanted to mention this as well. So Lollapalooza. Solana is basically so Solana is basically the official blockchain for Lollapalooza, and I mean it's a pretty big name. You know, like I've heard about it. If I'm correct, it's a music festival. Let me let me double check that. But I have heard about it multiple times in the in, in my life. Lollapalooza, yeah, yeah, Grant Park, yeah, it's a music festival, yeah. So uh, I was right. But all this to say is that they're the official blockchain for that, which can mean that right there you have the possibility of having more and more celebrities adopting Solana for NFTs. And I think I even heard recently that a few major sports figures like Brady and Curry, Steph Curry, have basically started or considered doing NFTs with them or doing something with Solana. Now... Why does that become big? Because this next article that I'm bringing up now is what ties this whole thing together as to why those NFTs might be huge. Now, FTX, which is one of the largest exchange and one of the largest backers of Solana, wants to create an NFT marketplace that could do cross-chain trading between Ethereum and Solana, which could mean that Solana right there could actually start siphoning off some of that NFT market share. And that's going to be pretty big because if they're able to take all these apes and all these things that are huge on Ethereum and make them scale faster on Solana, you know, that could be huge. You know, and that's just, that's just me talking from a perspective of market cap and what's been going on in Ethereum and how people are actually just scared to pay those freaking gas fees. Those gas fees are killing people on the Ethereum network. So something like this could actually be huge just considering that they could reduce those fees. Now, and another thing I want to mention too is those fees actually add to the cost of those NFTs. So the reason why some of these NFTs are selling so hard is because of how high, how high the gas fees are, which in my opinion could also be considered something that's a bit of like an artificial manipulation through demand. But we'll put a pin in that because, you know, everyone loves NFTs, right? So... The next thing I wanted to mention too, so and FTX was doing their cross chain for NFTs, the marketplace, and they've also decided to use Solana for something called Serum, which is going to be basically a high speed 
exchange, decentralized exchange. You know what I mean? And that's going to be big because that's going to be one of the one of one of the things that FTX is getting behind is a DEX, another DEX. So it's like now you've taken an exchange and now it's offering a DEX to be tied together with it. Whereas something like Uniswap or PancakeSwap stayed as a DEX, and things like Bittrex and Bi- uh, Binance for the most part have stayed as exchanges. You know, not necessarily connecting peer to peer. So more or less, what I was saying is that they've 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 gotten ready to do Solana NFTs as well as them launching the Serum DEX. And now another thing that they're starting to do is digital assets launched for tokenized stocks. So basically what they're doing now is they're even starting to offer stocks on a tokenized blockchain, which is something that I've said was very likely to happen through the regulation of this, the stock market in the future. Because the more and more manipulations of shares and all these uh, unfair practices, it's going to show that eventually stocks will end up on a blockchain because guess what it's more transparent you know you can't over leverage the economy when you basically everything could be seen it's hard for shadow things to happen in these banks when everything's pretty open and i would actually be down and i would think that it would be better to have our stock markets tokenized like that because you'll see hedge funds and a lot of these uh, investment banks either they'll go belly up or they'll get caught a lot more, or alternatively, they'll have to start practicing better, like uh, having better, more ethical practices for their money. So more or less, it's like they've already started doing uh, tokenized stocks in Binance, FTX, Bittrex, but now more or less Solana will be doing, the, will, they'll be supporting the network for tokenized stocks. And now that brings me back to the point that I wanted to say is that if they tokenize the stocks on a blockchain like Solana, the stock market is about a $300 trillion market. Yeah, so Solana's market cap, let's go back to that, $55 billion, hold on, hold on, hold on a second, $55, 54000000000 billion, $54 billion right now as of this exact second, and the stock market, which is $300 trillion. Let's just say one trillion fell into Solana just to tokenize certain stocks or indexes. It's a lot of money. That's a lot of X's to be gained for something like Solana. Now keep in mind, that ain't financial advice, but it's definitely an educated opinion if that's where things might go. And the last thing I wanted to end on was uh, Sam Bankman-Fried, the owner of FTX, He is heavily bullish on Solana. He's basically, I think basically he's accepted that as his his main blockchain. That's the one he's fully behind and that they're using for pretty much all of FTX's um, actual like derivatives and exchanging and everything. They're going to be building their, their, their shit on that blockchain. And that's another billionaire that's getting behind it. So billionaires, they have a knack for making money. So... Me, personally, I see this as you're better off rolling with the waves than against it. So, will Solana kill Ethereum? That I can't promise you. That I don't know. But I could definitely see a potential for Solana doing okay. And this is coming from someone who saw it at a dollar and was looking at it now at $180, thinking, shit, I made a bad move by not buying it and not trusting my gut feeling. But... All this to say is that, once again, this is all my personal opinion and any financial advice. I'm going to tie up this video on that. And I do got to say one last thing. You can see this beautiful shirt on me. This is the Sunset Drip. These are good friends of mine, and I wanted to represent their band and show love and support for them because they just got onto Show em. It's a nice, it's a, it's a rock and roll radio station, and it's nice to be hearing them broadcast it out there. You know, and uh, definitely check them out on YouTube, Spotify, Sunset Drip, excellent band. Beware of scammers in the comment section. And definitely like, comment, and subscribe and check out our next videos. Have a great day.